Hi and welcome back to Real Opinions. Today we're going to be covering Moonlight, which is the recent release from A24 Pictures. Just came out here in the UK, I know it's been out in the US for a while, but it's kind of the artistic hit of the Oscars, I suppose. It's the one that people are calling on, betting on most for potentially stealing the spotlight away from La La Land. And if you just want a quick summary from me, whether or not you should maybe see this film, I think it sounds very obvious. <laughs> I mean, it's it's what they're there for. But if you see the trailer and it seems like your kind of thing, you're probably going to enjoy it. The quality definitely stands up to what you are advertised. If the kind of slow, personal, dramatic films don't kind of appeal to you, like that's not your thing, then it, it'll probably seem a bit slow to you. It'll probably see you at some points a bit boring. But I really enjoyed this film. Not as much as other Oscar nominees, <coughs> La La Land, but uh, I still really enjoyed this and I think that it definitely belongs to be in the position where it is uh, coming up to the Oscars. I'll, I'll, I'll start off with just pointing out the things that I did well. I think it was very well directed. I think if you had to come away with one point from this film, it's that it was really well directed. I loved the camera work with this. I loved how the characters were interacting with each other. Um, there were lots of little moments with the direction that just made me so much more captivated by this film. I don't want to go into detail with some of the stuff, not because it's spoilers, because I really just liked picking out all the little details myself, really, and just finding uh, recurring patterns in the direction, little ways that they would they would use kind of unconventional camera shots, not in that they're, they're wacky in any way, as in they're just not... They're not really ones that you typically see in these kind of films. And no, I just think that it was the camera was very intelligently used. Everything was played to the advantage of making this film the most uh, kind of visually interesting and dramatically, as in dramatically the actors, uh, interesting that it could be. To make a comparison back to another one of the Oscar films that I talked about this year, um, Manchester by the Sea, which I really did enjoy as well, similarly kind of dramatic, and I had a big problem with that, with how they used classical music, because it felt like someone was, like, uh, it was like someone was holding up a sign, basically saying, feel sad, or feel this, or it was signposting, and very loudly, as opposed to just letting the moment exist naturally, which it felt like the film wanted to do, at least to me. Uh, and this, this film also has classical music in it, but it handles it in a way that's tied to the main character, which isn't apparent until the third act, but it's not like it's a thing that retroactively makes those segments better. But I think that they, that when they use the music in the first two sections, it doesn't feel like it's just shoved on top to make it more artistic or more dramatic. It just feels like a natural background music to what is going on in the perception of the person's mind, which I think... I, I wouldn't say that I, I loved all of the music choices, but I think that I definitely preferred the use of classical music to make something dramatic here as opposed to Manchester by the Sea. That was the very um, convoluted point that I was getting to. I already talked about the camera, but I'm going to go back to it. I really liked the colouring for this. I, I, I have I have read a few things on the just how they coloured it since, because it's just such a interesting film to look at. I mean, you can tell just from the poster that they're not going for a very typical colour scheme, but it's nice to get a dramatic film that's not trying to be dreary or dull or grey. And while I said that I quite liked the kind of Going back to Manchester by the Sea, I quite liked the kind of flat style of that. It was more cold and almost clinical with that, which I think, again, aided the story. But with this, I think it just really helped sell the location. I think it helped sell some of the characters. And I think it just made it a much more vibrant place than if you'd gone the regular indie route with it. There's just something that makes all the colours just pop and stand out, which I think, again, just aids the camera work, aids the scenes. And especially when it comes to these more smaller scenes, actually, rather than the bigger scenes, it really helps to sell the emotional mood. Acting-wise, the acting for this film, for the majority, is really, really great. The major the exception to that being the child actors in the beginning of Act 1, which I found just a tiny bit too wooden. Like, I could tell that they were directing them to uh, just kind of say the lines a bit more naturally, a bit more bluntly, as, child as children do, obviously. However, I think that they just went a bit too much on the bluntness, and it just ended up yeah, coming up across a bit of po-faced, wooden, not necessarily robotic, but just not as believable as uh, I've, I have seen child actors in the past. That's the only downside, I think, in the acting department of this entire film. Uh, everyone else, I think, does a really stellar job. If I had to pick one actor, that actually stood out the most for me, and I, I, I know I'm going to get this name wrong. It's uh, Mahashala Ali, who plays a sort of 
gangster role model in the first act. And I think that there was just something about the scenes that he was in that just made me pay so much more attention to everything. And it is, he just had a very magnetic presence on the screen. And he's performed kind of these manly, like, hard-chiseled characters before. But I think that this was the case where he he portrayed kind of the, the strength and the kind of fragility of that. I, I would say that this is his best performance I've seen him in. And... Yeah, if, if I had to pick one actor out of the entire group, I'd pick him. Uh, even though he doesn't get that much screen time, it was his performance that stood with me the longest. Uh, one thing I want to bring up about the three actors that play Chiron over the three chapters of the film, I feel like they had a very natural progression of character in that I never once felt like it wasn't the same person just grown up in between the segments, and I really liked that. Sometimes with these kind of longer form films where they have extended periods of here's this person as a child, now here's them older. I don't really find it as convincing for some reason, in that they don't really make, in that they leave either the, the year gap too long, that it just doesn't seem like the same person anymore, or it just doesn't, and it just doesn't feel believable enough. But I think with these ones, it was, even though there are massive changes in between these years, I think that the actors did very well to kind of keep a through line through everything. And I think that really helped with the continuity of the film more than any uh, visual continuity or directing continuity. Just their performances, I think, held the through line of everything. Uh, I do have some negatives with this film, mainly that I find that each act isn't as good as the act that came before. So I think the first act is by far the best segment of this film. And then, I don't know, the second one just sort of outshines the third. With all three being great short films in their own right, uh, I just think that the first one was what really got me hooked into it. And I know the ones after that, it just wasn't as much of a hold on me. And I don't think it was just because it was time continuing. I think it was just the fact that they weren't as completely captivating or interesting. Part of that, I think, comes down to the fact that they just seem to... I think that even though it had a very small cast of characters, it still felt like some didn't get enough time that they deserved. Uh, surprisingly enough, I'm not talking about Ali, which I said was the best actor, like I said, and didn't get... Uh, while I would have liked more screen time, I don't have a problem with what he had because they do eventually use his little screen time to uh, a point in the film even though it's a very small point as in it's a, it's just a fleeting moment i think that it's it stood out to me as a very important aspect of the film other characters just seemed like they felt like they had a point earlier on and then as it came on to to around about the end they just didn't they were kind of forgotten with the film and I think that was a shame because uh, in a film with kind of such a... While the film cared very much about its central character, it didn't care enough about the side characters, which are effectively the, the things that mould the main character the most throughout the story. It did slightly dip in quality as it went on. I think it dropped characters which I thought were needed and it just didn't give enough time to its secondary characters and yeah but that that's just my main summary of the faults and i think the only other reason that i'm not giving it as high a score as i could have with so few faults is that overall i just wish it was it kept that spark from the beginning and carried it all the way through uh, i think that would have really made me like it even more potentially more than uh, manchester by the sea uh, which i'd say that this is about equal with i'm comparing it a lot to that they're really not that similar films <laughs> I think it's just that they're both the, the artsy drama of this year, and so they're, I don't know, just because they're in the same category, I suppose it's easy to compare them to each other. But yeah, if this seems like your kind of thing, definitely go ahead and watch it. I don't regret, <laughs> I don't regret watching it. I, I, I really enjoyed watching it. Yeah, I, I, do, I did really enjoy watching it. And um, while I don't think that it's as perfect as everyone could claim it to be, I think that a lot of the quotes that people are saying about it can definitely stand. I think it is very moving in parts, um, surprisingly very moving right from the get-go, but like I said, that first act I think is what is the most impressive part of the film. I think it handles all of its technical aspects incredibly well. I think it was very, very well directed, and I can't wait to see what Barry Jenkins does next. I think it was written very well, I think it was acted very well, I think it was shot and graded and edited all extremely well yeah moonlight go see it thanks that was moonlight um if you want to hear any more of our reviews we have more up on the channel as well as we also put the podcast up here which goes out on itunes yeah and if there's any other film that you want to hear us cover for oscars or whatever small big or small uh just write them in the comments and hopefully we'll get around to watching them at some point